Hello guys, girls, and fleshy mammals. My name is Coexist, and today we're going to be going over on how to install OpenVPN Access Server on an Ubuntu server running 16.04 or above. Now, before we get into this, you might be asking, why make your own VPN server? Well, there are some great reasons to do this. Number one being, only you can connect to it. You don't have to rely on uh, your, uh, your VPN provider and how many people they might have on there. You have full control. It's great for gaming, especially if you uh, have a server that's DDoS protected. Uh, and it allows you to choose your host again because you can choose a host that has premium DDoS protection or maybe one that's closer to you, something of that nature. Uh, however, there are some co uh, cons to it. Uh, one, it would obviously require a little bit of knowledge, but of course, you're watching one of my tutorials on how to install OpenVPN Access Server, so hopefully you have some knowledge. If not, that's okay, that's why I'm making this video. It also requires a little bit of patience, because as with anything, um, we can try to generalize everything as, you know, as much as we can, but sometimes on some systems, it's just not going to happen, right? Again, I need to reiterate this, this is for Ubuntu servers, before anyone tries installing this on a CentOS server and it just not work. Ubuntu, okay? And then, of course, you can only choose one location, which is the location you chose when you purchased the virtual private server. So, anyways, here are some recommended VPS or VDS providers uh, that I've used before. Uh, if you're going to want to go with DDoS protection, I highly recommend NFO servers. However, they are really only located in the United States. They do have some servers in uh, Germany, I do believe. Um... Yeah, in Frankfurt, Germany. However, they are not uh, they are not the best. There's also OVH, which is, which is mainly based in Canada and France. And then there's Blazing Fast. However, they are located in the Netherlands only. And then for general use, there's always Vulture, Ramnode, and of course VPS.net. Now, you don't have to go with any one of these providers. If you already bought a VPS and whatnot, that's great. We can go ahead and install it on there. If you do have issues, though... Please refer to your hosting uh, provider's terms and see if you can get a refund for it, um, just in case it's not up to par. So the first thing we need to do is SSH into the server. Uh, for Linux, you really don't need to download anything. You can just open up a terminal or SSH client and uh, SSH into your VPS uh, using the following command on the screen. Uh, of course, you'll always be prompted to accept the server's fingerprint because it's new, and you can type Y or yes to accept. For Windows, you'll have to download and install PuTTY. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Once you do that, you'll launch PuTTY and put your server IP address into the host name area. Uh, click open or hit enter, and uh, it'll prompt you for your password. Um, I did forget to mention on both of these, you'll obviously be asked, to, asked for your password. Um, now you can actually paste your password uh, into it. If you're on Linux, you just use Control Shift V, and if you're on Windows, you just right-click inside of the PuTTY window, and it'll automatically paste for you. And then, of course, you'll be prompted to accept a new server fingerprint. Click Yes. So I go ahead and give you a little uh, a rundown of what that looks like on Linux. Unfortunately, uh, I mean, I do have Windows running here, but I don't have PuTTY on it. Um, but in theory, it should be easy enough. So, again, just open up a terminal if you're on Linux, or PuTTY if you're on Windows. Um, you'll need your server's IP address, of course. So, ssh root at that IP address. Go ahead and grab my passy word over here. That is super dank. If I can copy it. Okay, so we'll hit enter. Sure, we would like to accept that. And then the password. Once you're logged in, you should be greeted by this screen. Welcome to Ubuntu 16.04 or 16.10, depending on the selection you chose when you purchased the server. All right, so once you've actually made it into the server itself, all I need to do now is download and install OpenVPN. So in the description below, I have linked uh, two different packages, one for a 64-bit system and one for a 32-bit system. And what you'll do is you'll right click on that link and so and click copy link location or copy link. And then you'll just use the two commands right here on the screen and paste it in. And there you go. So to download it, we'll just do this. Wget 
find my link I am running 16.04 64 bit so we'll just do that right there once it's done that you'll just run dpkg so dpkg i and here's a kicker if you don't want to type out the entire package name which would suck just type part of it and hit tab and it'll automatically fill for you so once you do that and hit enter it'll automatically start installing uh, if the installation goes well and dandy uh, it will output your admin and client ui which might just take just there it goes so it says the access server web UIs are available here. You've got your admin and client UI. Um, so go ahead and take note of this if you're doing anything else. So once you've done this, all you need to do now is set a password for the OpenVPN user. Because when OpenVPN access server is installed, it creates a user called OpenVPN, which by default doesn't have a password. So what we need to do is set a password so we can log into the admin web server. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to log in. To do this, all you do is use the password command, which is P-A-S-S-W-D, followed by the user you want to set a password for, which in our case would be OpenVPN, and then slap enter. So, we'll do password, OpenVPN, hit enter, and then type ourselves a nice little password. And please, please, for the love of God, make it a decent password, okay? Don't do pass123. Uh, at least put numbers and punctuation in there for the love of God I mean seriously just please okay please <clears throat> please anyways once we've done that we need to access the admin web server so after it installs oh my gosh phone needs to be silenced okay so once it is installed it will output the URL where you can access this, the web servers, which you saw previously. It will look something like what is here on the screen. Of course, it's also in your terminal. So all you need to do is open up a web browser and navigate to that admin web server, and then log in using OpenVPN and the password, and then accept the EULA. So we'll go ahead and do that. Here is my, there we go. That's my, that would be my link there. So we'll just open up a new window of Google Chrome or whatever you happen to have installed on your system. Let's go ahead and go here. You will get this saying your connection is not private. Don't worry about that because it's your server. We know what we're connecting to. So just click advanced and proceed. If you're on Firefox, it'll be a little more picky. You will have to add a security exception. So now we just log in with the passwords we set. And here is the Gradle no, no, no. Here is the Gradle end user license agreement, which we'll just totally read. Yep, yep, we read it. Yep, and we'll click agree. Now, at this point, the default configuration is actually pretty much left alone at this point. You don't need to do anything else because its default config is already what you want to do with the server anyway. So, at this point, you just click log out. There's no reason to, uh, be on there anymore. But go ahead and keep your browser open. We'll still need this. So now we need to create a standard VPN user on the server because we don't want to connect to the VPN as the open VPN user because it has admin and it could be a vulnerability. So what we'll do is we'll just create a new one on the server. So go back to your terminal or putty and type the following add user and then a username of your choice and then set a secure password for it. So we'll go ahead and do that, add user, and I'll just do I coexist for myself, forgot the I, and sometimes it'll tell you to automatically set the password, sometimes it won't. Um, I do believe with 16.04 it is required that you set a password, but lower versions might not do that, and then you can just hit enter for all of these, you don't have to fill any of that in. And you can just hit enter again for the last one and it'll automatically add that user. So once you've done that, you need to access the client web server. So now we need to get your OpenVPN config file, which without this file, you wouldn't be able to make a connection to the server. To do this, we'll access the client web server. This is the exact same as your admin URL. However, you just take the admin off of the end and then you'll log into it with your new account and password. So. 
we'll go ahead and do that open up Google Chrome and then we'll just take the admin right off the end of that and hit enter I was already logged in but you'll just type in your username and then your password and hit go once you've done that you need to go down here to the bottom where it says your connection profiles can be downloaded and just click on yourself once you've done that now you just need to put this config onto any computers that you'd want to connect to it so you can put it on your iOS device however you have to email it to yourself which is kind of odd you can put it on your Android phone your tablet your Linux or Windows based computer or your Mac computer anyways now you just need to download OpenVPN to your devices so if you're on Linux there's a couple of things you have to do to get OpenVPN working if you want to use the network manager. If not, and you don't mind using a command line, then all you have to do is sudo apt-get install OpenVPN, and then assuming your uh, downloaded file is located in your uh, your home folder, then you can just use the following. So sudo openvpn my prof my VPN profile dot ovpn. Hit enter, and then authenticate, and bam, you're done. So to quickly demonstrate that. All we have to do is open up a new terminal because this one is obviously for the server. So we'll just open up a new terminal and we'll do sudo open VPN. And then my I know my downloaded fig config right now is in my downloads folder. So what I'll quickly do is just move it from here to say home. There we go. So now I don't have to type a directory. So now I can just do client.ovpn enter type in my pseudo password my username and then password for the server and then it should tell you boop, 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 boop. everything goes well it'll say in initialization sequence completed and for me just to quickly show you that my IP has changed or I'm on a server now we'll just go to the internet yay I thought I had it installed all right, as you can see, here I am with NFO in Chicago, Illinois. Mm, great. Just great. So we'll just shut that off now. Don't need that. All right, so at this point, you can probably uh, you can go ahead and close all connections to your server itself because you don't need that anymore. So if you have PuTTY open, go ahead and close it. For Let's see. Let's go back over to our slides here. For Windows users, you'll need to download the OpenVPN GUI, which I'll have that linked in the description below install it and its components launch OpenVPN GUI and then right click the icon in your taskbar select import and then once your profile is imported just click connect It's pretty simple and I'll demonstrate that for you guys so we need to download it copy link open up edge don't care go away Oh, I. Whoop. One moment. Haha. Give my computer just a moment. Give my VM just a moment to realize what's going on. Boop. Alright, what you'll do is you'll want to save this file. Once you've done that, you can simply close your browser or click run. Yes, you'd like to install that. Alright, so you can pretty much blaze through this installation. You agree, everything here will remain as is and install. Your tap adapter might take just a moment. Ah, here we go. You'll usually get this pop-up right here asking you, do you want to install the software? You'll want to click install. And I need to go ahead and download my client config as well. So, just minimize that. So I don't have a shared folder enabled. I should, probably should have done that, shouldn't I? Ah, the more you know. Of course, I don't have the clipboard in it. I do have it enabled. Oh, okay. Just took it a moment. Good grief. Alright, so anyway, once you've done this, 
I know this. All right, so once you've navigated to the page, just again log in, type in your password. On Windows, you might need to do a refresh if it tells you to connect instead of just um, download. So if it does the uh, spinning circle and says waiting for it to open or something like that, just refresh the page and download your user locked profile. Okay, that downloaded. And then open VPNs installed. All right, don't need to show the readme. So now we can just run open VPN. Well, I cannot spell today, can I? Here's what happens to me. I try to do uh, things that are informative and this is what happened. What, how are you telling me it doesn't exist, fam? Fam, Windows, what are you doing? Windows, come on. Okay, we'll do it manually, since apparently I can't search. You'll just find OpenVPN, and then... What's around here? What in the world? There it is. This VM is not liking me at all. So, when you first... When you first install it, it'll say, hey, there's no readable connection profiles or configs. That's okay, because we haven't imported any. So now what you'll want to do is right click on this network icon. It looks like your normal network icon, except it has a lock on it. Sometimes it'll hide up in here. So just, oh, see, there it went. You little bastard. There we go. So right click on it and hit import file. Now, of course, mine is going to be in my download. So we're going to click client and click open. Say it imported. Great. So now all we need to do is connect. Type in our username, password, and then we'll go ahead and save that password. And voila, just like earlier, we are connected to our VPN. Doo -doo -doo -doo, just to make sure. Yep, here we are, again in Chicago. Illinois. So, so at that point, you're done. If you're using this for gaming on a console, you'll need to do a few more things, and you'll have to connect your console directly to the computer running the VPN. There will be a video linked in the description when that tutorial is up. So, that's it for you guys today. If you liked the video and enjoyed the content, go ahead and give it a good old thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you got your server set up and running well. If you disliked it or are having issues, go ahead and give it a thumbs down and go ahead and write me a comment down there in the comment section so I can look at that and see what's going on. And as always, see you in the next video.